What's the word, y'all? Let's do the quickest recap, maybe maybe imaginable. The 2023-2024 NBA uh, season continues. At least one more game as we go into Boston because the Dallas Mavericks prevented themselves from being swept. The game is not over officially, but Jordan Walsh checked in, and no disrespect to him, that is my cue that the game is over. I mean, the Boston Celtics pulled their starters in the third quarter, really geared themselves up for game number five, which I'm curious to see if that means Chris Porzingis will get a full green light because he was available to play today under certain circumstances. And if your team is down by 20 points in the first quarter, I don't know what those circumstances could potentially be, but maybe in game number five with two more days of rest, he'll be able to play. Regardless, 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 the the Dallas Mavericks played their best game in the NBA Finals where like... We talk about the good Jason Kidd teams, whether it be the 2022 Dallas Mavericks that made the conference finals or this version of the Dallas Mavericks that's in the NBA finals. They have hung their hat on the defensive side of the ball. You would see a guy like Luka Doncic who is an offensive powerhouse, an offensive wizard, and think that is their identity. When in reality, when this team is really good, it's really the defense. And through the first two games of this series, the defense has been fine, maybe fine. I mean, you held the Boston Celtics one of the best offenses of all time to 105 points in game number two. And I don't remember what the score was in game number one, but it hasn't been the main problem. It's been, it's been okay, right? It's been okay. Well, today, this was the best version of them defensively that we've really, really seen. And that's from top to bottom, from Luka Doncic all the way down to Maxi Kleba, down to pretty much everybody that got real minutes before the starters were pulled. And it, it kind of is a testament to how little wiggle room you have in a playoff series. Where the first two, in game number two, it was a close game. Game number three eventually ended up being a close game because that 22 to 2 run. Where, like, you, if you doubt, if you're Dallas and you snuck out with one of them and then you win game number four, this is a tied series. But because you have, like, a Luka Dantas foul out, if that was the main catalyst, or um, the, the, some of the turnovers in game number two, or a Jalen Brown, or a Drew Holiday takeover, Jalen Brown takeover, because of that, you're still fighting uphill a battle that many teams have tried to fight up and incomplete, and nobody has been able to do it. A 3-1 series, and, and Derek Lively said they're going to take a game at a time, game at a time, game at a time, but still, this just shows you that, like, man, if you can go back, if you're the Dallas Mavericks, and get back two minutes of one of the previous games and maybe change the outcome, it changes this entire series. But instead, it's like, amazing game, Dallas Mavericks. Can you do it three more times? The likelihood of it is probably no, because the Boston Celtics this season has not, haven't even lost three games in a row the entire 100 games they play. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it just shows you how little, little wiggle room you really have. But you got to get the credit where it's due. I thought Luka Doncic was phenomenal on the, both sides of the ball um, today. I, I hate that it took back against the wall, world talking about my defense um, uh, everybody talking about me fouling out for him to really, really lock in on both sides of the ball. But again, like I said in, in my podcast, and then I said in the end of game number three, I think ultimately this finals run, if it ends in a loss, which again is likely that it will, is going to be an eye opening scenario for Luca as he realizes how important both sides of the ball really is, that you can be an offensive powerhouse and still be a contributing player on defense. Nobody's asking him to be Drew Holiday, but just be a guy that's not the worst defensive player on the court. And, and actually, sometimes you could be the worst defensive player on the court and still not be a bad defensive player because you just, you're surrounded by talented people. Um, and this was just one of those games where, again, la- game number three, you saw a good Kyrie Irving game. Today, I would say it was another good Kyrie Irving game. Um, but you also saw other people contribute. Derek Lively, through the first three games of the series, looked like a 20-year-old. Today, he looked like the version of himself that we saw in the Minnesota series. 11 points, 12 rebounds, 7 offensive boards, and a 3. This man attempted two threes all season long, and I would just assume, and I ain't ain't seen it. I just saw the stats on basketball reference. I would assume that at least one of those is probably like a half-court heave or something. He took it so very confidently, and it was nothing but butter that I think that that's just going to be a part of his game eventually. Uh, People showcased when I tweeted that, that when he played in college, and I don't watch college basketball, that he did shoot a three-point ball at least a little bit with some confidence. So that's probably an evolution of Derek Lively that other teams in basketball don't really want to see if he's now a live threat and a pop threat is a little bit more difficult but I thought he had the he had the stretch where he hit the three he got a block I got an alley you back to back to back and that was phenomenal I thought his playmaking on the short roll was phenomenal he even hit um Dante Exum in the corner for one play I think that was a three that they took away in the first half because Dante Exum's heel was on the the sideline but regardless he was amazing today and I thought you got contributing uh times from PJ Washington the first time in this series where he ended up with two May threes And as the final buzzer just completed, it looks like in that garbage time that I just watched Tim Hardaway, or I didn't watch, Tim Hardaway Jr. hit five threes. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. Uh-oh. 
Tim Hardaway Jr. starting to wake up in time for game number five. I don't really know. Um, it was just one of those games. And we talk about flattening the numbers where this is going to be a series where neither team turns the ball over a ton. Um, both teams are going to rebound very well where it's probably going to be relatively even that the three-point shot will be the determinant factor in a lot of these games. That has been the case in some of the previous ones where the Dallas Mavericks couldn't get up 100 points and a lot of that is because they failed to hit their shots or can't even generate open three-pointers. I thought they actually got up a couple corner three-pointers where I wasn't expecting. One of them was Maxi Kleber on the right side and he hit a three and he he shot that. It's like he got a green release. He was so confident in that going in. So they flattened the numbers today and guess what they did? They won the three-point battle and again it sucks that this is happening in game number four opposed to a game number three or game number two where the series was still completely live but i did say before th that so eventually some team will come back down 3-0 again i don't think it's this series but eventually it will happen in our sport it's happening in in hockey it's ha happening in baseball it's happening pretty much every other sport that has a seven game series format except for the nba um but back back to the, the variants they won the three-point battle for the first time of the game. Where the final, again, uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. hit five, Jaden Hardy hit one, and then Marquise Morris hit one. So some of these are with the garbage time players, but bear with me for a second. With the main factor, one of the main factors in this series is Boston getting up an absurd amount of three-point shots and making a bunch. In, in game number three, they made eight more three-pointers than the Dallas Mavericks. That is a 24-point gap. And today, they made one more three than the Boston Celtics. I think that's got to be the formula. I thought defensively, again, they showed a lot of different things where um, in, in a lot of these games, first three games, it was basically when a player drove, it was show, 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 and the help. Today, I feel like they didn't do that much at all, where it's like, hey, if you get beat, you get beat. We're not giving up all of the corner three-point shots. We're not giving up all of the open three-point looks, and I think that helped them enough. Um, 84 points to final score for the Boston Celtics. Obviously, just not going to get it done, but we will go back to Boston in game number four. And I can't say that this series gets extremely interesting unless we get to a game number six. Um, shout out to them for getting this win, but we got to see if they can replicate it in Boston. And again, Boston has not been, over the last three years, this team has been super dominant at home in the postseason. So anything is really possible then. But if we get to game number six, then we can really talk about history being made, but one game at a time, just like Derek Lively said.